In this tutorial, I am going to create a holiday winter theme card. Let's start by making a new document. And I'm going to do width 7 inches and height 5 inches. DPI 300, and that's standard size for the front of a greeting card. Click Create. All right, next I'm going to create some snowy hills. So to begin, I'm going to make a brand new layer. Let's rename this Snow Hills. And I'm going to be using the pen tool to create my hills. Here's the pen tool right underneath the type tool. If you hold down the pen tool, you'll see there's the pen tool and the free pen tool. The free pen tool um, lets you draw freely and the other pen tool is a little bit different. What's going to happen is you, when you choose the pen tool, it's going to be creating paths which are kind of like imaginary outlines until they get filled in, which is why you see this fill right here. And I just want to fill mine in with white. And there's a big cross over stroke. Stroke is the outline. And I don't want an outline, so I'll go ahead and keep that with none, the big red cross. Okay, so I'm going to get my regular pen tool. And with the pen tool, what I'm going to do is click and let go and that creates an anchor point that's going to be the top of one of my hills then I'm going to jump down and kind of estimate where is the rest of my hill going to go and I'm going to click and hold the mouse I'm going to click and hold and then I'm going to drag a little bit I'm still holding click and drag and see how when you drag it creates that extra line that extra line is called a direction handle and it's going to tell your future path where to go. Notice that the more I drag down, the curve, it's called a Bezier curve, gets larger and rounder. So I'm, that's what I want. I want that curve to get large and round. And I'm going to let go. So right now this path exists. It's part of the shape. This line right here is called a direction handle. And it's not going to actually exist. It's never going to show up. All right. I want my hill to kind of go back up so now i'm going to click and hold and i can see it popped up and i've got a new direction handle as i hold and drag and then i'll just bring this down i'm going to estimate that it's going to come off the page right here so i'm going to click and hold and i'm making a shape so what i need to do now is trace all the way back to my original anchor point my original click so i'm just going to go around the document click release jump over here click release hover back on my original anchor point, click it, and now it's a shape. Okay, now um, on the background, I'm going to go ahead and fill that background in with a gradient. I'm going to choose kind of a blue to white gradient. So I'm going to put blue in my foreground and white in my background swatch. I'm going to go to my gradient tool and that's hiding underneath my paint bucket. And here with my gradient, I'm going to drop that down and I'm going to choose the first one. It's foreground to background color and I set those up with blue to white. All right, so now with my gradient then, I'm going to click and drag up and create a little bit of a gradient. So now you can see that gradient on the background and here's my snowy hill layer. Okay, um, I would like to make more snowy hills. So if I make more white hills, they're gonna blend into each other and I want them to stand out. So I'm gonna give this first snow hill a drop shadow. I'm gonna go to layer, layer style, drop shadow. Layer, layer style, drop shadow. All right, now that I'm on my drop shadow menu, um, I am going to increase the opacity so I can see it. Right now it's black. I'm gonna put the blending mode on normal and I can't see it that much um, because you can see from the preview that the shadow right now is actually going to the left. It's going off the picture plane. So I'm gonna 
flip the angle a little bit so that I can see it. And it's pretty dark. I'm just going to play around with increasing the distance and the spread and the size. I'm, I want it to kind of get that little blur on the edge. There it is. And it is really dark. So I'm going to reduce the opacity. I want it to be a little more subtle. There we go. And I'll click OK. OK, so I have my first snowy hill. I'm going to make another brand new layer and I'm going to call this Snowy Hills 2. And I'm going to do that again with the pen tool. And uh, in a moment, I'm going to put the second layer behind under the first layer. But right now, I'm just going to draw with the pen tool. I'm going to start again. I'm going to click to set an anchor. And I kind of want to make a hill that's going to be in the distance back here. So I'm going to click and hold and drag. And you're going to see that it's trying to fill the shape as I make it. So this looks incorrect, but you'll see in a moment it will correct itself. So right now my path is pointing up. So I'm going to click, hold, I'm going to drag a little bit to make that nice and curvy. And I'm going to come back down, click, hold, drag it. And down to here, click. All right, now, so you can see it started to fill in the shape, but it's not filled in down here. I have to com complete the shape by going all the way around. So click, release click release back to my original anchor click all right so now it's a nice hill and right now it's blocking my first one so i am going to switch that and put that one behind and i would like it to have that same drop shadow effect I'm kind of making this look like pieces of paper that are layered on top of each other like a real greeting card so i'm going to add that same effect to my other snowy hills. So let's go back to layer, layer style, drop shadow. All right, and now by default, my previous drop shadow is already programmed, and that's good because that's the one I want. So I'm not going to change anything. It's already defaulted to what I already set up, and I'll click OK. All right, now you'll notice that those paths, the blue paths, they look like they're still there, but they actually will not show up. So once you click away from those layers, those blue path outlines will disappear. All right, next I would like to add a texture to my snow. So I could leave it like this and make it look like paper, flat smooth paper, or I'm going to play around with a texture. So to do that, <clears throat> I am going to go find a texture. Um, I went to Google and I typed in snow texture and I clicked on this first example that I liked, this one right here, and it was a free stock photo. So I'm going to click on that and it brings me to this snowy texture. And then I'm just going to click on the download free. And then I am going to get that out of my downloads and I'm going to drag it to my desktop. All right, so this is really just a JPEG, right? There it is. It's a JPEG, snow texture. So any JPEG can become a texture. Okay, so I'm going to go back and I'm going to open this up as its own document. I'm going to go to File Open and I'm going to browse for that snow texture photo I just downloaded and put on my desktop. Okay, there it is as its own document. I am going to select the whole thing with my rectangular marquee and I'm going to copy it. Command C on a Mac or Control C on a PC. And then I'm going to toggle back to my greeting card. I'm going to make a brand new layer and call it Snow Texture. And I'm going to paste my Snow Texture, Command V or Control 
B. Hopefully that works. There it is. Okay. So now I want to put this texture into the snowy hills. I need to make a clipping mask. Now this uh, was a vector shape. We made that with a pen tool, so it's a vector shape. So what's going to happen if I try to make a clipping mask? Take a look. I'm going to go to, I'm on the snow texture. I'm going to go to layer clipping mask. Okay, so that worked nicely. So you'll see now there's that drop down arrow that says it's clipped into this layer. Now it's really um, distinct. I am going to reduce the opacity of the layer and make that texture a little bit transparent and a little softer. All right, that looks nice. I could leave it like that. You could also play around with your layer blending modes and see if that gives you a different effect. Um, on white documents, you're not going to see a lot of change. But do think if you have a different kind of texture, your blending mode uh, will show up with a more distinct texture. OK, so I have that on that first snowy hill. And I'm going to duplicate that. I'm going to do that again for the other snowy hill. So let's go ahead. I'm going to make a new layer on top of the other snowy hill. And I'm going to paste that again. All right, there's the snowy texture pasted again. It is on top of the layer for my snowy hills too. So snow texture two, snowy hills two. I need to make a clipping mask layer clipping mask. All right, and then I'm going to reduce the opacity again. OK, looking fun. All right, next I could add um, some new things. You know, I can even move the hills around. I'm going to get my move tool and maybe make that one a little shorter. You can also resize them. I'm going to go to Edit Free Transform and just kind of resize this, see if I like it better. OK. All right, so next I could be adding a um, snowman or a house or a skier or some trees. All right, how about I'll add a little snowman? And I can do that by using my vector shapes or my circular selection tool, my elliptical, my ellipt, ellipse selection. I'm going to do my ellipse shape tools, though. So I'm going to choose the ellipse shape tool. Now, remember, it's going to make a brand new shape, and it's going to be filled. I don't want to have an outline around it, so I'm going to keep the stroke at none. But right now, it's going to give me a white fill, and my shape is an ellipse. OK. Um, Whenever you have a new sh vector shape like this, it should create a brand new layer. There it is. So I clicked, dragged out, drew my ellipse, and it made a brand new shape layer. It says shape one. I'm going to rename this to, um, how about, I'm going to do three ellipses for the snowman. So I'll call this snowman one. All right, I'm going to do that again. I'm going to draw another ellipse. And I'm dragging out, holding with the mouse, I'm holding the space bar. So hold the mouse, hold the space bar, and I get to move this around before I fill it. I'm going to let go and filled it. And then, by the way, if you want this to be a perfect circle, then you would hold shift while you are dragging it out. And I'm going to call this snowman two. All right, last time. You could duplicate these, by the way, or just keep drawing them. OK, and by the way, I can always get the Move tool and move them around since they are shapes. They are vector shapes right now. They are not pixels. So I can move it around. I can resize it, edit free transform. All right, I can go back to the other one and I can resize this one. All right, at this point, um, the, they are stacked 
with the, you know, the smallest one on the top and the middle one, then the largest one. And um, I want to add that same effect with the drop shadow to make them look like overlapping pieces of paper. So I am going to, I'll just call this snowman head. All right, so I'm going to add that drop shadow to the head. Layer, layer style, drop shadow. All right, and the settings from before are a little bit too big. So I'm going to decrease the distance and the spread and play around with the angle a little bit. I want it to go down like the snow. Now notice it's affecting all of my layers. Okay, and make the size a little smaller. And I'm even gonna make the opacity less. Okay, and I'm gonna do that again for the middle portion of the body. Okay, so it popped up that same setting as the default, so I'll just click OK. Okay, now when I click away from these layers, um, then you can see what it looks like. And right now I don't have the drop shadow on the bottom. Maybe let's go ahead and add that there too. Okay, so at this point I have my snowy hills and my snowman. I could add that snowy texture to the snowman. That would be some nice consistency. All right, come back for part two to see the rest.